This is a remote control car powered by a combination of rockets and electric power. As you might imagine, it doesn't hang about. But how did I go about building this thing? If you've watched this channel before, then you might be aware that I have this turbojet engine. It's extremely powerful and unbelievably loud. It's an absolutely incredible piece of kit, and I rather fancy building some sort of experimental jet car with it at some point in the future. The thing is, I've never actually built a car before, so I thought maybe I should start with something smaller and simpler first. This video was sponsored by Karma, an app and Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code. Personally, Karma has helped me to purchase parts for this very video. For example, I saved 50% on these bearings, which was a big win. How Karma works is very straightforward. Firstly, on your computer, you download the Chrome extension. Next, you go over to one of your favorite electronic sites, say, and click the button or the slider when you see an item you'd like to save. You can move and drag the slider or button around so it's not in the way. You can also set up email or mobile notifications to tell you when an item's come back in stock, goes on sale, or has a relevant coupon. On. You can save items into multiple wish lists and categories so that you can shop more strategically when you're doing some shopping for a project or something. And on top of this, Karma scans the web for coupon codes and adds them at the checkout automatically. You can also use it to get cash back via PayPal from selected retail partners. Definitely check out the link in the description to get the free browser add-on and use it the next time you're shopping for a future project. Thank you to Karma for sponsoring this project and now back to the video. So where do you start? with building your own rocket car? Well, let's begin with something familiar. This here is my Armour Limitless, an RC car capable of some serious velocities. To show you just how fast this thing is, I'm going to drive it head-to-head -head against my full-sized car, which is also not exactly sluggish. Right, the plan is to do a bit of a time trial. First of all, we're going to drive the Mini 0 to 50 miles an hour and see how fast it accelerates. 0 to 50 because we're staying within the speed limit, of course. Then we're going to do it with the Limitless. Okay, on our marks, get set, go! speed limit that was, don't worry, on a very quiet road. Now let's see how that compares to the Limitless. Attempt number one. Whoa. I think it's hard to control at high, high speed. I think the steering trim was a little off that time. Three, two, one. Well, that was three times as fast, and the car reached a maximum speed of 131 kilometers per hour, according to the GPS. So why is this car so fast, and what can I learn from it? Well, a lot of it has got to do with this powertrain under here. However, that's not the end of the story. This car relies on a very stiff chassis to remain pointing in a straight line at high speeds. Also, like a Formula One car, this vehicle uses downforce with a front and rear wing to push the car into the ground. Again, that helps with stability at high speeds. My DIY rocket car is going to borrow some of these features to help it travel in a straight line. Line. Is it going to be faster than this car? No, it's not. But that's not the point. The point of this project is just a bit of research and a bit of fun. And who knows, the car might still crash spectacularly, knowing me. Uh, so let's get on with building it. I spent a long time designing the car in CAD, drawing each component separately on Fusion 360 to build up a three-dimensional computer model. The majority of the car could be 3D printed on my Creality Ender 3s, with even the wheels being made from PLA plastic. This is so I could quickly manufacture alternative parts to experiment with down the road. My favourite part of the design and build was the steering assembly. These six individual parts are bolted together to form a steering system that was inspired by the Limitless. I made some brass inserts to reduce friction and wear at the pivot joints. As you can see, the result is a strong, high-tolerance sub-assembly. 
Alright, so this is all fine, but where do the rockets come in? Well, as you already know, this is a rocket car, so I'm going to be using a cluster of small Estes rocket motors, which will provide around 100 newtons or 10 kilograms of thrust when ignited remotely. These flammable rocket motors are the sort made for model rockets that you can buy from hobby shops. They're single use and can only burn for a couple of seconds. But these are not the only means of propulsion on my rocket car. I'm also going to be using an electric ducted fan. These are meant to go on model aircraft, like this one. So here's my thinking behind using both. I'll drive the car up to speed using the EDF and then press a button to ignite the rocket engines. I'll be using the rockets as a boost to rapidly increase the acceleration of the car and to get it up to a higher top speed. Now that I've finished 3D printing most of the components here, such as these wheels and these bits and bobs, I'm going to start assembling them into the finished car. So these carbon tubes are used to create the backbone of the chassis and all of these parts slide along it. To finish the build, I installed the EDF, fitted a thrust tube, added a fin and rear wing, hooked up the steering and gave the car a test drive outside. Okay, time to find a smoother place to test this thing on a closed road and fire the rockets for the first time. Right, I've got the rocket system all set up now. I've done a few changes to the car. Um, I've got the GPS on there so that we can measure what speed we get up to. And first of all, we're going to be seeing how fast the car goes on just the EDF on this nice flat surface. After that, I'm going to be driving the car with the fan and then igniting one of the rocket engines as a boost. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, speed is on. Way! Oh, that's pretty fast. Well, it felt fast. Lack of brakes, no problem. <laughs> uh, something I didn't mention. There aren't any brakes on this car. 32 kilometers an hour. Wow, what a speed. I think we have some work to do, boys. So that wasn't very fast. Maybe a higher voltage battery and an intake lip on the fan would help in the future. Right now though, it's time to use the rockets. The first step here is to fire only one motor, but leave the others on board to simulate the weight distribution of later runs where all three motors are ignited simultaneously. But for those tests to be carried out, the car would have to survive its next run. Time to go full throttle and see what happens. Oh dear. Losing control of the car, I'd crashed and clearly damaged it. Well, at least it wasn't on fire. Don't worry, the only thing burning here was a bit of cardboard, and it looks worse than it was. It was easily extinguished with a single blast of the fan, but despite this, the entire car was written off. So what actually happened? The car tracked well under acceleration, increasing its speed by about 30 kilometers an hour. At burnout though, the car swerved and lost one of its wheels, which sent it into the bank. At this point, with the car stationary, the ejection charge from the motor set fire to the paper thrust tube, which melted the chassis, the fan, and seemingly everything else on the car. Uh, <laughs> seems to have had a bit of an accident here. The carbon axle is actually melted. I mean, the good news is we did get to 72 kilometers per hour. I sort of expected to get this back, to be honest, um, in one piece. <laughs> but uh, clearly that was too much to hope for. We only got to 72 kilometers an hour, so clearly I have many things to improve on. In any case, I think I'll be starting again from scratch. Now, sadly, I'm not going to be able to do another run of this car with the three rocket motors. The uh... 
motor, uh, the EDF is a bit knackered. I should reiterate, this was done on a closed road and there was no chance of anything setting fire around here because it had rained a, a ton yesterday. May I remind you, I live in uh, a very wet country. <laughs> to answer the question um, of whether this is the fastest RC car in the world, uh, the answer is certainly no. <laughs> we got to 72 kilometers an hour. Um, and, oh god, this uh, GPS is a little bit burnt. So yeah, maybe I'll make another rocket car in the future. Um, maybe I'll make a part two. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Uh, make sure to download Karma. Uh, thank you very much again to them for sponsoring the video. Um, there's a link in the description box and it's a free add-on and yeah, it's great. So check it out and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.